Hello guys and welcome to the continuation of our uh, paper one from just this uh, past week or so. Uh, let's see, let's see. So as you could see, uh, the question paper was fairly standard. And then there were some just a few challenges, but not really bad ones. I wouldn't label them as the bad ones. I mean, this one was for me the best. This one is pretty common, but usually they never really put the square root signs, so they put a bit of a flavor there. And then of course this one as well, so talking of a maximum value, that means you have to think of that quadratic in terms of the graph and see that the term number at the turning point, you see, all these terms are negative, so it already tells us that this quadratic will be having a maximum because A will be less than zero, so I mean that was fun. So you guys had a bit of fun indeed, of course, pretty standard sigma notation, geometric sequence, and then this one was a bit of a challenge, so Perhaps not so bad of the challenges because nothing was really out of the ordinary here, but it demanded a bit of your undivided attention. So let's have a look at my favorite section, which is functions. You know why I like functions is because um, with functions you are having something similar to, to geometry. So this is more of a geometric representation of some algebraic ideas. All right, let's see. Uh, we are told here on the graph that g of x is given by a into 1 over 3 to exponent x plus 7. So this has been shifted up by 7 times. And then what do we see here? This is what would be b, b being the base of that exponent. Now, when b is less than 1, but greater than 0, we know that, well, we're looking at a graph that is either decreasing if a is positive, all right, or increasing if a is negative, all right. So those are the stories. So we don't know what sign is a, but obviously this already gives us that idea. And then it says it passes through point E, which is minus 2 and 10. Now it says calculate the value of A. So someone really, I don't know what happened here during the making of this paper. So calculate the value of A. So let's just do this on the fly because I can see here they don't want a graph. So when there's no graph, you just don't stress yourself too much. You just go with the flow. So, now we're continuing with question 3. Of course, this is DBE May, June 2022 Paper 1 Mathematics, of course Yeah, bo. So we're doing a uh, question 4 Okay, let's try and go as far forward as we can. So here we're given g of x. Maybe I should try to not write in a hurry because sometimes when I relax, I write a bit better than when I try to be in a hurry. Sometimes I am my own enemy. All right, so we know that, of course, there's a point E here, which is also part of this graph, which is minus 2 and 10. So not a big deal. So we want the value of A. So 4.1 is easy. We know that we just simply write back what we have. A into A third to exponent X plus 7. All right. So we know that through point E, which is minus 2 and 10, this is such that 10 equals a into 1 over 3 to minus 2, all right? Plus 7. Easy. All right, so I have a bit of sleepiness here, so I'm drinking my tea. So 
so I hope you don't get annoyed by that you know all right so what do we do here we transpose this to that side right so already when we say 7 this implies of course now when you take 7 to that side what we remain with is a 3 into a um, now what are we going to do here um, well what we need to do is to do this convert this into a negative exponent okay this is 3 to the minus 1 all to the minus 2 right oops no 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 there's nothing there okay so which implies here I have 3 equals a then here this is going to be now times 3 squared okay because minus 1 times minus 2 is just 2 so what do I do here I divide by this one of course um, therefore it tells me that my a equals now this is this 3 is to the 1 so this one goes once and it just takes that so my a here is a third or you can just expand this one and say 9 3 once to 9 3 times so do you see a is also small it's a third but it is positive so we know that well therefore this is a decreasing function okay it doesn't really matter what this is looking like so I'm going to just leave it at this one so what is the next question or oh, how many marks were there so of course for correct substitution here it's important um, the answer and maybe some gymnastics here I really don't know man yeah doch. what can we do maybe for solving a bit here so it doesn't really matter anyway 4.2 let's not waste too much time here now it says um, calculate the coordinates of the y-intercept of g okay so not a problem so what do we know we know that g of x is now given by this thing and that one <laughs> and yes I'm not going to say too much so we know here that for y intercept it implies that x equals 0 0 0 0 so which also implies what now that y equals because remember we're looking for the y intercept it's going to be a third of a into a third to exponent 0 plus 7 what do we have here this is a third plus 7 right because anything to the exponent 0 is 1 so I just multiply the 7 by 3 is what 21 plus 1 is 4 so this is 24 over 3 okay again you can just put it into the calculator just to be on the safe side you know sometimes these things can haunt you what why did I have 20? Because this is 21 plus 1, man. Sometimes doing a double check, you get away with murder. You see, I almost committed murder here. Therefore, we know that our y-intercept is such that 0 is 222 over 3. So that's the answer okay so that is good no questions about that one so pretty standard work as well how many marks were they giving here just two marks okay so I would just stick with the answer 
and leave everything to whatever it is. Um, so that's fine. So let's keep moving. We have a lot of work ahead of us. So let's just do 4.3 before this thing dries up. Let me take another color. So 4.3, it says now consider this graph here. Okay. Uh, so consider this graph h of x equals a third of x. So, okay, not a problem. It says now describe the translation from g to h. So do you see here we lost our a and that's 7. So what happened here? Obviously if you inspect here we dropped the 7 so that means we shifted this graph vertically down 7 units. Okay. But what happened? We lost a third because remember we calculated that um, Okay, let's just do this for a second, 4.3. So remember, g of x was a third into a third raised to exponent x plus 7. Now we have h of x being a third to exponent x only, okay? So what happened between these two? So let's start, 4.3.1. So, well, you can tell that we multiplied by 3 here to get rid of this so that it's 1. So we, we, we increased. Remember when you A actually increases or decreases. Remember when this is small, it means the graph is going to be slow. But we made it faster because now we took it to 1. So we can say the graph of G is shifted seven units down, okay? Because we lost the seven, so we say minus seven there. And uh, should I say increased? and made let's just use simple stuff so and made bigger by a factor bigger one now better God, by a factor of three because when you multiply that by three you get one isn't it so that's it. I think that's the best uh, explanation you can have here. I think the shifted down 7 units is one mark and then made bigger or faster. You can say faster or bigger because remember when it's a third, when A is a third, this graph rises up slowly if you had this thing. Remember this was a decreasing function. So it would sort of like become a slayer, okay? But now when we increase it, it becomes a lot steeper, I think. Ugh, maybe you get the idea, man. Whatever it is. Anyway, so that's the story we have over there. All right, so these are the two marks. Nothing really serious over there. So 4.3.2, what do they want? All right, uh, okay, maybe by factor of three to obtain the graph of H, okay. I may be crazy, man. I, I toss back and forth because my brain works like nightmare. I don't know. Now it says determine the equation of the inverse of H in the form Y equals. Of course, when you want the inverse of an exponential graph, it is a logarithmic graph. And I'm not going to show you how we've done it. So all you need to end up with is Y equals log of x to the base a third okay that's what you need over there but maybe let me not be mean to you guys sometimes it may be the first time you watch anything I've done so 
let's see so what you do here inverse so you can just say uh, h the inverse of h is such that where you see y you put x and where you saw x you put y right so you swap these two and then now to solve for y you need to introduce logs log of x equals log of a third to exponent y now log rules will tell you that log of x equals you multiply the exponent in front y log of a third and then you solve here by dividing by log of a third log of a third and that goes therefore y equals now when you have this situation log of a number to base 10 for example divide by log of another number to the same base it is the same as log of the number over the base that became the number below okay so that is something like that I don't know what happened there everything just faded but in essence this is what was asked of you so this is an easy and quick nine mark so they didn't try to complicate it maybe you would just be faced by this part of what to say about it because we always focus on the horizontal and vertical reflections and then we forget about expansions expanding it or making it bigger or faster or steeper whatever okay not a problem so easy 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 stuff over there so please don't lose marks in this type of a question so we're going to move on to yet another video so please watch the video on exponents or exponential graphs I think I tried my best in that video to give you know the very best you can you can find on those kinds of questions please have a look at it it's quite important but again it will depend on how well you know this if you know it well then it's fine but if you don't please have a look you will see the integration there might just be what you need okay let's move on question five we want to move as fast as we can so question five here we are given again g of x equals a over x plus p plus q so already here we have a pretty standard uh, uh, what hyperbolic function so this is a hyperbola so now listen to this once it says now the following information is given about g the domain is an element of real numbers it's always the element of real numbers but that restriction it tells you that the vertical asymptote is x equals minus 2 right great because if it is not supposed to be minus 2 then that is the vertical asymptote at x equals minus 2 and that already tells us that when we put it back into that expression it's going to be x plus 2 then we are told the y-intercept is at k all right and then sorry the x-intercept is at k the y-intercept is at n okay not a problem so it says now show that the equation of g is given by so you can see this part we already established it from that statement the rest will have to work out okay okay so not a problem we can handle 5.1 not a problem all I know is that um, I know that g of x is going to be equals to a over x plus 2 I know it from what I have been given this so I'm not gonna explain where I got this one from at least to you you understand from that restriction on the domain this tells me this is the expression to give me the horizontal I mean the vertical asymptote plus Q but I still have a lot of unknowns here now I can use the X intercept to work out something so let's say through this point K 
which is 1 and 0. This would be such that 0 equals a over x here is 1 plus 2 plus q. Okay. So, which implies what? Now I can transpose the q to the other side. Minus q equals a over 3. Okay. So those two add up together. So this is over 1. You cross multiply there. Therefore, it tells you that a is minus 3q. So we can make this one equation 1, okay, because it's incomplete. We can say also, through point n, which is 0, is 2 minus a half. The situation above is such that minus a half equals a over 0 plus 2 plus q which implies that we have here minus a half equals a over 2 plus q over 1. Now there's many ways to deal with this but the best is to multiply by the LCM which is equal to 2, right? Now, you just multiply by 2 through, throughout, so what is that? So this is minus 1 equals a plus 2q. And then we move that one over, therefore our a is going to be equal to um, minus 1 minus 2q. Okay, then you can say equation 2. But we know here that, well, equation 1 is equal to equation 2 because they are each equal to a, okay? So, uh, doch, we can say, but 1 is equal to 2. All right, the reason is that each equals a. Okay, this implies what? It implies that minus 3q equals minus 1 minus 2q. Great, you can already see now this is an expression to solve for q. So we transpose this guy to that side. We get minus q equals minus 1. Therefore, q equals 1 because we'll have to multiply by negative here. To solve for q or you divide by negative 1 throughout. So obviously we know now that well that q was 1 so there's no way we are wrong because we're working towards a known answer which we can simply say now sub q equals 1 in equation 1. This tells us that our a is going to be equal to minus 3 into 1 right which is minus 3 great not a problem then we can say therefore g of x is equal to minus 3 over x plus 2 plus 1 so we proved it just one solution man why I don't know so I'll give a mark for getting that far and give a mark for getting that far and for equating these two and solving for Q and solving for a so one two three four five and yes, do I really have to give you a mark for this? Maybe not, but it's fine. However, you got these six marks. It's still all right, man. It's still all right. So maybe let's try and create some space here. I, I, I can't have my page wasted. Okay, so that was 5.1. Six marks, easy. 5.2 over here. 
So what are they asking? They're saying write down the range of G. Again, we know that, well, range is equal to a set of Y values such that Y is an element of real numbers. But what is the restriction? Y cannot be Q. So Y is not equal to one. Okay, that is how I like to write my range. But you know most, you can say Y is an element of, uh, now, if we're talking real numbers, this is going to be, well, minus infinity going to one. None of them are included. Union one and positive infinity. So you can write it that way or you can do the inequalities. It's still fine. So again, you just know that in a hyperbola, domain is an element of real numbers. The restriction is on the vertical asymptote as well as the y, uh, sorry, the range is the element of real numbers too and the restriction is on the uh, horizontal asymptote. So, let me show you so you can say y is less than 1 or y is greater than 1. You can never include it because it's an asymptote. Alright, not a problem. So they said write down, so it's just one mark, whichever you chose to write. 5.3, okay? Not a big one says now determine the equation of H, okay, which is the axis of symmetry of G. Okay, in the form Y equals MX plus C, where M is greater than zero. That means the gradient that is positive. Remember the axis of symmetry is the whatever you know. Okay, this one I'm going to keep it simple as well. I know that my Y is going to be equal to x is it a plus or minus p what is the general formula man but anyway i think it's a plus p whatever it is plus q i don't know if we didn't use a minus p though so i know it's like this again if you don't if you don't understand this one go and watch my video where i did um, the hyperbola i showed exactly where this came from now this is going to be exactly the same thing as x plus 2 plus 1, which is x plus 3. So this is the equation. So I've shown how this is done. But if you don't like this method of solving this, you have this option of saying, look, the asymptotes will meet at this point. Let's call it uh, point R. They will meet at point R where X is minus 2 because you take the opposite of what was under the what, what, what was on the denominator and then you take Y as it is. So you know that this axis of symmetry will pass through this point. So 1 is Y equals X plus C which is what you want because they told you that the gradient must be greater than 0. So it's the positive gradient 1. Then through this point R of minus 2 is to 1. This will be such that 1 equals minus 2 plus C. Therefore C is 3 when you transpose the 2 to the other side. Therefore you know Y equals X plus 3. So even if you choose this method, you will still get the same answer. So I feel this is the quickest method ever because for me, all of that works nicely, so you get your three marks pretty easily. But again, you can still do this. You get your three marks. Not a problem. So this is simple. Okay? No need to be sweating there. Now it says write down the coordinates of K prime. Okay? The image. So what they tell you? The image of K reflected over H. Wow. 
what is this remember these very axis of symmetry if you think about it from a standard if you think of a, a standard hyperbola let's say for example is like this because we just try to get something that is uh, similar because I mean once a is less than zero then the graph is in the second quadrant and fourth quadrant remember these two are symmetrical about this line here which passes through the origin y equals x and that is the inverse line but because these things get shifted around so this axis of symmetry with a positive gradient or even with the negative gradient these are basically the inverse lines for how these are so if we're reflecting this about it it means we want the inverse of k that's all so you know the inverse you switch x and y okay great not a problem so that is what we're going to do here so we're going to say fine 5.4 k prime is going to be this point but here's the problem here if you're not paying attention this may hurt okay this may hurt so let's have a look at what they have given us and try to make sense of it sometimes it can hurt okay it can hurt a lot so let's just do a rough sketch of our graph come on pens don't die on me like that so let's say this is the minus two right that they told us and then this is one So this is one. So these asymptotes meet here. And we know our graph is going to have a y-intercept. Of course, they told us that it has a half and one. Okay? So it passes like this. So they told us what was those, okay? And then these ones also are going to be pretty much similar to that and go that way and that way. So now you can tell that if you switch this directly, because remember these things are shifted. So if you switch this without shifting it, you are dead, okay? Because imagine you shift this, this is one and zero. So when you switch them around, you will get 1 and 0 here. But remember, this graph is not defined here. It's definitely not defined there. So it becomes a bit of a nightmare. You understand? Now, what is the matter with this? Uh, this is where you realize, man, <laughs> you are in trouble. So you can't just take the opposite as you would other things so here you are in trouble you need to think about it now remember you look at this point in this manner you ask yourself this is point k uh, one is to zero right right now you look at point k how far is point k from the axis of symmetry right because the axis of symmetry is there and we know that this one the one we just calculated, our inverse line, it cuts at 3. So if it cuts at 3, that would be minus 3 as well. So this is y equals x plus 3. Okay, That is what we have. Right? This is y. I always forget to label my axes. Then that's the origin. Now look, if this is what we have, um, we want to know how far is this point from the center. Okay, This is where the asymptotes cut each other. So you can even use this line from here. How big is this distance? So remember minus 2, minus 1, 0, and then that one. How many units do you have here? 1, 2, 3 units. Okay. So this point on this graph should also be 3 units from the center, which is the axis of symmetry. So you're going to have minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5 okay so you're going to have your 1 2 
3. So this takes us to minus 5. So this means this point is going to fall there. But what would be the corresponding y value? Remember, you see this one. This point is how far from this asymptote is just one unit down. So in this case, it should be one unit up. So this is 2. So basically, k prime in this case is going to be what? Minus 5 and 2. So this is what you need to do. So they just said write down. So you do all the thinking and the working and then you, you, you smile. So I mean if you don't think of it this way sometimes it might hurt but again yeah these are some of the tricks you can employ when you are trying to solve something. You just look at this point. How far is from this center? Well it's three units from that minus two and it's one unit from this axis of symmetry which is one so the opposite is going to be above because this graph is above this asymptote line so it has to be one unit from this line so it's going to be two and then it has to be three units from this line so it's going to be minus five so that places our k prime there all right not a problem so that was a bit of a tricky question i think but only because it's not a commonly asked question. So you get your marks there for those two. And then you walk away with the 12 marks on offer in that question. So this was pretty nice. But um, maybe this one was not really a common question. Bit of a challenging one sometimes if you don't think of what this graph looks like because it can be a bit of a situation. I don't think there's an easy way to think about it than to think of it with the graph and see what you can do because it won't make sense if you just reflect this directly like that because I mean it lends where this is not defined so you start to be like mm, I have a headache and yet you should not. You should be smiling and be like you know what I've got this challenge. Alright guys I hope you liked that one. So let's keep moving. We are doing a bit great so far. So we have to move. We don't want to waste time. Time is money, Baba. Get chalet. Now go get chalet. Now, finally, we are given a graph. So it's very strange, you know. They normally ask you to do two graphs at a go, but it seems like, yeah, in these major exams, they just give you. One graph, one graphical representation, because we have not been asked to sketch. Okay, let's not care about that so much. The sketch below shows the graph of f of x equals minus x squared minus 6x plus 7. Again, I always tell you, look at your a. a is minus 1. And in essence, a is less than 0. And what do you expect your graph to look like? Like that, it's a smiling face. So do we see a smiling face? Definitely, so we did not get some reflection of what we have. Because these people are very crafty. They can give you this, but give you maybe an inverse of it. Or give you a reflection of it, be it about the x-axis or the y-axis. So sometimes, be always on the lookout, which is why you want to read this and interpret it alone and look here and see if it looks what you would be expecting and then you continue, okay, before you start to be caught out. C is the y-intercept of f, okay, ah. if that is the case then I know C is 0 and 7 because the y-intercept is always the constant in your expression, okay. So I already have the coordinates there. So A and B are the x-intercepts, which I would have to determine from that quadratic there. Okay, so D is, okay, again, if that is the case, you substitute minus 5 into the original, it gives you the value of K. No big deal. So let's leave it like that. It says, calculate the coordinates of E, the turning point. Uh, this is proper stuff. So what I do here... I don't like to suffer, so what I'm going to do to avoid suffering is to simply 
just completely squaring this thing because I'll get both the coordinates. Uh, if you don't want, you can use your formulae. I mean, it's up to you really what you want to do. So let's do question six quickly. So question six, I have been given f of x equals, hey, my pens are dying now, x squared minus 6x plus 7. All right, so 6.1, I want the turning point E is the turning point such that. Now I'm going to complete my square here. So I will take minus into x squared plus 6x minus 7, which implies what? Um, so this is what we do now, x squared plus 6x plus, now I take half of this and square it, so half of 6 is 3, then you add that 1 minus 7, and then what do we do here? We subtract this one. So that is the story. So always make sure you subtract this from the constant. Otherwise, it will, it will hurt you. And you don't want to get hurt, do you? Now you take what is under the square, you put it together. So x original sign from there, it's positive. Because remember, we manufactured something here. So, um, then you take what is there, all squared, and then here minus. Now, 3 squared is 9, right? So this is 16. So this is going to be minus 16. Okay, great. This also implies now minus into x plus 3, all squared. When you take this one back, it gives us a plus 16. So I know, therefore, point E is this point here. You take what is here, it's going to be minus 3 is to 16. Because, I mean, this is in this format. Uh, this is in this format right here. F of x equals a into x minus p all squared plus q. Okay, so that is the story. So I did it in that fashion. Again, you have options here. You can use your formula here that your x is going to be minus p over 2a is 2y, which is 4ac minus p squared over 4a. Okay, yes. Or, what you can do, you can do the first derivative here and solve for x and then substitute back into the original to get the corresponding y value. So you have plenty of options, but I like to work less, so when I find a situation where I can integrate things, I just do it. But make sure you don't make mistakes in whatever choice you make. So three marks here. So you're getting two here. I don't know where is the third. <laughs> I don't know about fate. I do year get footed because I don't know what these guys are doing. So I'm going to give you a mark for this because it's important. And then to draw this out is also important. So that's what I'm going to do. 6.2. What is the story? It says write down the value of k. So they didn't ask you anything. So you're going to say k equals. So all you do, just substitute that minus 5 into the original equation. So let's do it. Remember original, you're not going to substitute here or somewhere else, just take to the original, please. It would be dangerous, but again, this is the same as the original in any case, so you can try it here, but don't do it, just go for the original. So we have minus into minus 5 squared, right? Minus 6 into minus 5, okay, plus 7. So this is 12. So k is equal to 12. So they just said, oh, what am I writing? 17. No, man. 12. 12. 12. 12. So 
you know how you did this so how you did this I'm just going to show you just going to say f at minus 5 is going to be 12 which is the value of k the corresponding y value okay so they said write down so write down the answer because they're just going to give you one mark don't want to be showing too much when you are not going to be rewarded for it okay now it says determine the equation of the straight line passing through C and D. Okay, now that we know, okay, K we found out is 12 and we know is minus 3 and 16. So we want a straight line that passes through C and D. They want the equation, so ah, this is easy, man. That is my ruler. So this is easy stuff. Um, we just connect these two points and have our straight line there. Not a big deal. So you can already tell this is a straight line with a negative gradient. You've got two points, so nothing to worry about. Okay, so not a big deal. So six point three is answered like this. So well we can say M C D is going to be Y at C D minus Y at C over X at D minus X at C which is going to be equal to Y at D is twelve minus seven over minus five minus zero so we can see that our current is negative so 12 minus 7 is actually 5 so 5 divided by this is minus 1 I'm not gonna bother myself let me just check and be sure I have a tendency to make mistakes without noticing them so you see sometimes look like um, what? Someone who's compulsive, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, be in the habit of double checking things. Otherwise, you're going to die. So I'm getting minus one, so it's fine. So you don't want to die an unknown death. Just die knowing why you did. So we can say, therefore, the line CD is such that y equals minus one minus x plus c so you don't write one x okay now you can choose any point so through point let's use c zero and seven because it's the easiest seven equals minus into zero plus c obviously why do i even waste my time because i mean Come on, man. Look, it's cutting the water. Why do I suffer, man? Why, why, why? Helic. Yeah, ne? Therefore, C equals 7. I didn't need to do this one. Therefore, Y equals minus X plus 7. I should have just said C equals 7. See the graph. Done. But anyway, it doesn't matter, man. Life is nice and easy, so I think here yeah, correct substitution and getting that gradient was important. And then I'll give you two marks for this one to determine C really was not such a big deal. So there's the four marks, no biggie. Now let's see, they are telling us another story, so they are trying to give you a bit of a few challenges there. Now they're saying um, a tangent parallel to CD touches F at P. Determine the coordinates of P. So look, for this to be a tangent to our graph situation, what do we need? Now you think about it. Tangent is parallel to this one. Ah, uh, man. So uh, what this means is that it can only be a line coming up to this point over there okay i win 
Why do you look like you've been hit by a truck now? Has there been a truck hitting somebody? So this tangent is going like that, Baba. Spare that my line is not going to be exactly nice. So this tells us that this point P is over there. We want that P. That point P over there. Where is my little thingy? Ah, uh, come on, man. Can't do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. These things like to irritate me. Like super irritate me. And guess what? I get tired of looking for things. Anyway, let's just do it to show itself when it likes. So what do we want? We want the coordinates of that point. So obviously, we already know the gradient of this point here. The gradient at that point is minus one. So we just need to find the first derivative because the gradient is the first derivative, right? So we want to find the first derivative and equate it to one, minus one, sorry. And then we solve for x. Then once we find that x, we substitute to the original, so we have it. So we're going to use our differential calculus here to sort this one out. I don't know, something is trying its best to mess with me. And uh, I feel like this is just an unfair attack. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do not do it. You are not allowed. To mess with me, man. Ah, uh, what did this thing do? Where is it? Here. Something just disappears. Anyway, I'm not gonna look for it. So you know the drill, right? So to answer 6.4, what we want um, is to say uh, F prime of x. The first derivative is what is minus 1 because that is the gradient at a point because if this line is parallel to CD it means the gradient is minus 1. So that is where this is coming from. Now let's do the first derivative of this function. This is going to be minus 2x, right? This implies minus 2x uh, minus 6 because that one is going to be minus 6. That of a constant is out equals minus 1. And then we solve for x here. So this implies minus 2x equals when this one comes out to this side. So what I know is that this is going to be plus 6. Ne? So plus 6 minus 1 is going to be 5. Therefore, my x is going to be minus 5 over 2. And then you can do, say, this implies that now f at minus 5 over 2 is equal to what? Uh, this one is fading, man. I don't know if you can see what I wrote over there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to substitute this point over here into my original. So what was my original? It's minus this one. So I got minus what? Okay, it's minus 5 over 2. I hope it's correct, man. Squared minus 6 into minus 5 over 2. But sometimes, ugh, it shouldn't be wrong, man. It shouldn't be wrong. Plus 7, so it's positive. So you see, this is cool. This is cool. So I get 63, 63 over 4. Okay? So I mean, look, the top is odd. The top was odd. The bottom is even. The bottom was even. So it looks okay. Therefore, point P is like this. Minus 5 over 2 is to 63 over 4 and it makes sense because I mean this was negative so if we read out our x value here you will see that indeed 
there's no way that there can be any witchcraft about this one. See, the x value here is negative. Ah, why do you slant when a man sun kaila when ah 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 ya bonaki? Ya bonaki? Ah, yan kaila lento lena man. Damn it! Anyway, so you can see there that ah, uh, isake kaila nangogo. Devil. The devil, and you can tell that this one is less than our turning point. So let's see what is this 63 over 4. Anyway, it's 15,8. So you see, it's not very far, but it's not exactly that one. So let's see what is 5 over 2 is 2,5. So yeah, it looks all right. So anyway, we found these coordinates. So I think you can see that it's not so many marks indeed. That statement is important and to do the actual derivative is very important and to find the X and the Y so this is where the four marks come from I mean to write it out eventually it's not a big deal we calculated those coordinates so this is what matters now let's create some space here I'm going to finish off this one So, uh, I don't know what happened to the lead. In any case, it's dry, so I don't have to stress myself. So, let's finish off. It says now, for which values of x will f of x minus 12? Now, what do you see here? We're taking it down, 12 units, be greater than 0. Hmm. Okay. So what we have now, 6.5. Hey, they're asking some tough ones now. So f of x minus 12 to be greater than 0. So this implies that we are looking for situations like this here. Minus x squared minus 6x plus 7 minus 12 greater than 0. We have minus x squared minus 6x. This one is minus 5 greater than 0. Okay. Of course, they didn't ask you to calculate. So the easiest and the quickest way to deal with this. But sometimes it hurts. I think it's not always easy to tell what is going on. I mean, I have this thing here that helps me to picture what is going on. Sometimes I don't really stress myself with a lot of things and thinking here. So let's just imagine that was... So we're pushing this one 12 units down. So 16 minus 12 is 4. So this is still 7. So let's say 4 is over there perhaps. Now do you see it gets compressed? on the horizontal axis. So do you see that we have our new x-intercepts over there? So they are much smaller than those ones. So I mean, is there any way of estimating what is going on? I think it's not so easy. It's not so easy. So yeah, man, it's, 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 it's terrible. It's terrible. But I will see in the future if I cannot find a shorter, a shorthand method of working out these coordinates without trying to do the calculation. But I think at this point I'm going to stick to the calculation. Uh, again, you have other options, but yeah, I will just stick to my calculation. It just makes life easy for me. This implies that I will have who. Or in any case, what you do here, you just multiply by minus 1. What are we going to have here? x squared plus 6x plus 5. And then when you multiply by negative, the sign changes. Okay? You get this. And then, uh, come on, man. Yo, he and the gazella into a slung x squared uh -huh. <laughs> uh, 
Aye, I got it to board the cog. The bubble tongue of one because part of late, yes. I don't know what I'm doing. This is messing up my work, man. Why? Why? So now everything is positive, so it's going to be five and one. Okay? So critical values is minus one and minus five. So uh, I'm going to put it into my table. You know my favorite. Uh, okay. So now I will put these factors as they appear here. Though This is x plus 1. This is x plus 5. And then critical values is going to be minus 5 and minus 1. Always place them in ascending order on the table. And then we're saying when this one, we want to find zeros now. When this factor x is minus 1, this factor is 0. When it's more than that, which is probably 0, then it becomes positive. Just want to see the signs. If you established positive, this side is going to be negative anyway. You can't have positives going on, but try and check because there's a chance you may be wrong about this one. So let's put a minus 2 there. Minus 2 plus 1 is minus, so yeah. Then this factor, we want the 0. When it's minus 5, that thing is 0. Let's check for a number greater than 5. Let's say 6. So this is positive. It will be positive. It will be positive, okay? Less than that, let's put a minus 6. So it becomes... Um, uh, what? Even. What is that? It becomes negative, man. Okay, so we do the product here. Negative times negative is positive. Any number multiplied by zero is zero. Positive times negative is negative. Uh, zero over there, and then positive. So what did we want? This product to be less than zero. It is less than zero here. Open circle because it is not included. So this is the solution. Therefore, our x must be less than minus 1, greater than minus 5. So that is the answer. So for this format, you always get two marks. So that means when they ask you this, OK, you can work this out on your rough work, because you're only campaigning for these two marks. You just write this. They won't hit. But uh, sometimes it's nicer to show where you got this so that they don't say you copied. I don't think <coughs> I wanted to use the shifting and work out how things are moving. Sometimes it doesn't really help so much. So let's just not go there. Let's leave it at this one. So these are our two marks. And then we are happy to take our 14 marks of this question. So I think this was pretty easy. They didn't complicate anything. So they gave you exactly what you love so you can't cry if you do be ready to hang yourself with some shoelaces right all right okay guys um i don't know man i lost my lead but uh, it's not important it's already dry anyway this thing is dry anyway so let's do some financial math. Oh, doch. this is one of those guys. This is one of those sections I really don't like. I like money though, but I don't know. I never liked. But it may be because I didn't do this one when I was doing my metric. It was pushed to standard grade people. But they didn't take it to these lengths anyway. So we didn't do it as higher grade. I did my math in higher grade, so we didn't do this thing. So maybe that's why I'm not attached to it that much. But anyway, if it was for standard grade, then I'm going to crack it anyway. But yeah, it can be annoying because I never really found a, a comfortable method for it as yet. But yeah, we just work through it little by little. So question seven says, how many years? Ah, we want the period. You know, once you want the period, once you want the period, that means logs, Baba. 
so you only use logs because there's going to be exponents remember financial math is like compound interest mainly or whatever so this is a geometric sequence sort of so you're gonna take geometric and when you want the number of terms in a geometric because the number of terms is sitting right at the top at the exponent so you're going to have to drop it with the logs all right so now it says how many years will it take for an investment to double so we want a hypothetical investment because they're not telling us exactly what is this to double in value if it earns interest at a rate of 8.5 per annum compounded quarterly so these are some of the keywords you need to pay special attention to so here 7.1 is pretty easy we can handle this one so this is just simple compound interest not simple compound interest but it's simply compound interest question so 7.1 so here's some of the ornaments so this let's say let the investment be p let the investment be p okay which is just the principal i mean therefore we know that our a is going to be twice the principal which is 2p not a problem and they're telling us that this interest rate i am not interested in the rest man so once i have this i'm happy i'm really happy okay let's just write it so this implies now that a equals p 1 plus i to that one so that is the formula you're going to use and we are looking for this guy so this implies that 2p we said a is 2p equals p into 1 plus now the interest rate you always do this one maybe i should show it uh, here and say i is going to be ah let's see it's gonna be 8,5 divided by 100 which is that one then this one is divided by 4 because it's quarterly so yay it's a nightmare I tell you so let's just say this is going to be 0, 0,085 over 4 because it's gonna cause us a few problems it's it's an ugly number 0, 0,085 over 4 to n so we don't know what we are looking for but we're looking for that guy we look for that guy okay not a problem so what are we going to do now here we know simply we're going to divide by p here so p will cancel in any case so we are happy this implies that now 2 equals this thing here Oops, yay when this is compounded quarterly, so it's gonna be 4n. Yay, 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 yay. I almost committed matter. Remember when this thing changes to some sort of a nominal effective interest, you multiply the n by that which it is under there. Okay, so 4n. I almost made a mistake here. I almost made a big mistake so if it is quarterly there if it was monthly you're gonna put a 12 in there if it is yearly then it's just n okay not a problem so we want to introduce log so log 2 equals log of this thing here okay for n and then of course our log rules tell us the exponent multiplies in front I'm just not happy with this copying this thing yo 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 now the exponent is gone so you know most that you divide by this one so this implies that 4n equals log 2 divide by log of this one over 4 okay and uh, ah, this implies that 4n equals but it's very dangerous to do this thing uh, 
Ish, 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 ish. I don't like this, you know. Anyway, so ugh, let's just stop this one. Let's not write for n. Let's just do our n here. So whatever we're going to get here, we're going to divide by four unomers, right? Right. So we're going to have log of two here. The base is ten, so no need to stress here. Divide by log of one plus. 0, 0,085 divide by 4 all right all right so that is what we have here so I'm getting this one it's, it's like this and then I divide this by 4 and then I'm getting this one so I'm gonna get here 8 comma 2 4 and this is years eh? yeah they said how many years so this is years remember I always do to two decimal places so what I did here I took this because you don't want to round off early it's gonna be wrong and then you divide by 4 and then you can take to two decimal places so it ends up like that all right, guys, so that was a bit of a nightmarish cal calculation. So four marks, okay, it was not really bad. So I think here yeah, what is important was the correct substitution into the correct formula. And then to introduce logs here was kind of crucial. And to get to this step, and that step was fine. So I think the four marks is there. So it takes about eight years to do this, okay? Because I mean, this is like two months or so. Because to one decimal place, rounded off this one falls away. Maybe two months, four weeks. <laughs> so, uh, doch, but four weeks is a month, okay? So roughly three months. Okay, let's not overly explain things, you know. Sometimes in life, you just live life as simple as you find it. Now there's another question. It says, now a company purchased, mach purchased machinery for 500,000, okay? After five years, five years, remember? The machinery was sold for 180,000 so this thing depreciated so this was the principal and the new machinery was bought okay fine not a big deal so what do they want 7 point cal okay 7.2.1 calculate the rate of depreciation okay of the old machinery over the five years using the reducing balance method hmm Oh, calculate the rate. So we want the rate this time. So, hey, these questions are cool. They are cool, man. 7.2, 7.2.1. So what are we going to do here? Well, we know that the principal here, this guy, P, is 500 day cent. 500 day cent. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. And the A, which is what we're going to sell it for, is going to be the 180,000. All right. So we want I. That's what we want. But what is the number of years, man? The number of years is five years. So this is easy. So this takes us to this equation that uh, A equals P into one minus I, like that, because that is the depreciation, isn't it? I think so, yeah. But if you don't remember this, you're going to check your information sheet, right? So this implies what? So this is what we sold this for, 180,000. So you can put the rents if you want equals 500,000 into 
1 minus i, which we don't know, so this was 5 to exponent 5. And now you know you just divide by this. So this implies that 180,000 over 500,000 equals this guy. 1 minus i to exponent 5, which also implies that, so what is this? Um, 180,000 divided by 500,000, I get 9 over 25 equals 1 minus i to exponent 5. Okay, now can I change that to exponent 5? Definitely not. This is crazy. It wouldn't be possible. So if it was possible, yes. Because, I mean, once you have this answer like that, what you do here, just press shift, and you press this fact thing. It tells you it's error because it's not possible. But let's say you had 32 and you wanted to convert this one to some sort of an exponent. You just press that shift, and then you press fact. It gives you it's 2 to exponent 5. So, but this one is not possible to make to, to, to exponent 5 of some kind so that we can do exponential rules. So here, if you have this, you have to do the fifth root, basically. So if this is this, you just take the fifth root of this thing. Now, you don't have a choice but to do that. Therefore, it tells us now, once we take the fifth root, it takes that. So we know that 1 minus i equals, and then we take the fifth root of that one. So, so all you do, just go shift this one, and then it's good, because once you say shift this guy, what did I press? Yeah, shift this guy, it's good. Then you put 5 where you want. And then you come inside, and then you do that fraction. See your calculators, Buffy Dying Egg. My cashier back in the days was never going to be able to do this. You'd have to sweat, I swear. Okay, so let's see what is this one. Yo, this is that thing. So, um,. Now, I'm not going to round off. I'm going to write it as it is. 0, 0,8151931096. Because sometimes it's going to hurt if I, I do that. So, look, you can already tell here that, therefore, I, the interest is going to be, you, you move i to this side and that thing to that side, so it's going to be 1 minus that. So let's see, 1 minus 0, 0,8151931096. So what I'm getting here is 0, 0,18, let's do three decimal places, 185, okay? to three decimal places. And therefore, you know that your interest rate is going to be, what? You want it in percentage, right? You multiply that by 100. Oh Lord, why did I do that? So it's gonna be 18.5%. But you can still leave it like that, but I mean, when they say interest rate, you want it in percent. So 0, 0,185. Times 100. Yeah, you win. yeah, it's 18.5 percent. So I'll leave it like that. It's fine. Uh, let's leave it here. Again, not a very difficult question, but maybe the challenge would come here. Sometimes you guys forget you can do this fifth root, sixth root, ninth root, whatever, whatever root you want of whatever number you can take it because you also have this fancy calculator so you don't need to think about it you just press shift and you press this one it gives you whatever you want so you put whatever number and whatever number inside okay let's leave it at that not talk too much so that was again a nice one four marks so 
I think correct substitution into the correct formula and I think uh, to get here was quite important to know that you are taking the Dondonis and maybe maybe to get to that I mean this is one and the same thing so I don't know where the fourth mark is but it's fine we're getting it somewhere so that is the story of that question all right now what was the 7.2.1 okay now 7.2 let's just close this one before it dries up i keep losing these leads you know this thing is getting a bit naughty it's getting a bit silly i tell you why do i keep losing my leads got Alright, that's silly. Don't do it. Alright, the rate of inflation. Now, once you hear the word inflation, what is inflation? I don't know guys, you need to know a lot of English though. See, this is why you can't do maths without understanding English, but you need to also understand English in the context of mathematics. Because if you don't understand English in the context of mathematics, as well as physics of course, you need to know some English words mean something mathematically. So, you need to understand these things. This is why when you read and you practice, you also familiarize yourself with the words in the newspapers, especially the financials. Don't get bored. You know when we're doing a uh, metric, there was this paper, the star. It used to have a lot of, you know, financial stuff in there. So at times when I was doing this section for the guys who are doing standard grade, I used to help, so if you guys know things, please help your colleagues. Don't be selfish and, you know, keep these answers or approaches to yourself. Please share whatever you can do with your peers. Trust me, it will make you better as well as it will make them better. And that way you learn to work together as a unit. This is why you will form very fruitful corporations in the future when you guys now are experts in your whatever chosen fields. But if you start becoming very introverted about, you know, academics, believe me, you will know what to do, but you will form very bad partners with others and others are going to exploit you. So you won't, you know, gain respect of others, you know, as well as you would if you learn to work with people, because that way you will start to learn the differences in their mindsets it gives you challenges in explaining things in a different way than the way you understand it originally. And that way also expands, you know, your understanding of a much broader idea behind all of what you're doing. So, you know what, um, but what inflation is, is just compound interest, but it's actually, I don't know, the best description is to say D, let's write it down so that you know what this means. And therefore, you will understand what you need to do. So this is like D compound interest. Okay? D compound interest. The key word here is compound interest. That means whatever calculation you're going to do here, you're going to apply the compound interest formula. But D compound interest basically it means inflation is the opposite of what compound interest is supposed to do. Take, for example, an investment is earning compound interest at this particular sorry at this particular rate so when inflation comes it cancels all of that of course that will depend if it is the same level then it cancels it to zero that means you won't earn interest in your investment but if that inflation is even higher than the interest you were earning then you'll start losing money so whatever amount you will have there is going to be much less than 
what you put in. So this is why, you know, the so-called um, investments are quite dangerous and risky sometimes. Though they talk of risk, how you minimize risk and, and things like that. Again, they use statistical methods to, you know, predict how the markets are going to shift around and all of that, you know. Trading, in essence, uses a lot of statistics. So statistics are applied in there. And of course, these things, you know, some simple mathematical calculations about how money is, you know, running around. So, hey, this can make you a very good one. If you are doing accounting, this is the section that you need to master. I think if you guys are doing maths and physics, and those who are doing physics, when they get to this one, go to those uh, accountant or those accounting guys that will teach you how to handle. Uh, They'll teach you how to handle this better because I think the accounting students are, sh are supposed to be excelling on this one because this is their thing, okay? Even these words mean a lot to them than they would to someone who's doing just simply science, okay? Hey, I'm talking too much. Man, we're supposed to solve things here. We're not supposed to be chatting. It's not a chatter here. We're not chatting. We're not chatting. Okay, so basically I wanted to just point out the fact that inflation, because I think this is where a problem can come to a student who is not well aware. So please guys, read newspapers. Read those financials, even if they don't make sense. Trust me, when I started reading the star, at school we used to get Sowetan, the star, uh, African reporter, you know, all of those things. That was Guatemala Springs, okay? at Nkumbula Comprehensive School, that is where I did my metric. So there we used to know, so at 10 on Fridays has some academic stuff like biology this week, the other week is going to be mathematics, some nice simple questions, so we always made cuttings and kept those. And then we used to read though a lot of these papers to try and get our English better, because I mean we knew that in our English class you would get a passage from a newspaper sometimes, then you have to interpret that. What is the tone? What was the reporter trying to report here? What what influence was this to society at large and things like that? So you need to analyze a lot of things. So that for me kind of made my science stronger because you knew now that the language part is sorted and therefore you don't struggle to understand what you're doing. Of course, have your dictionary on your side. So that as you read these very complex terms, take a dictionary and have a look. Now you guys have phones that are very fancy. They can keep a dictionary right there on your phone. Just go there, you type the word, gives you the answers as to what they are. And at times you have Google, go there, it gives you a lot more. And you see, you don't have to really fail, you guys. We didn't have that, we didn't have that. So we relied on, you know, working things out as mechanics. You guys are using electronics, just sitting there, just a few buttons on your phone. Gives you more than I would get in about a week or so. Anyway, I'm talking again, goodness. All right, so it says, uh, uh, anyway, this talk was sparked by this. The rate of inflation, inflation for the cost of the new machinery is 6.3% per annum over the five years, okay? So is this simple interest or compound interest? Like I said, inflation is like a decompound, so it fights with compound, so you're going to use a compound interest formula here. But this is per annum, so it's not monthly, it's not bi bi-yearly, what? Bi-annually, it's not, you know, quarterly, it's just yearly. So, you know, you don't divide by anything. So what will the new machinery cost at the end of the five years? Remember, the price of the machinery was 500000 So don't forget. Okay, so let's see what is that. So this is just simple compound interest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Applied in the form of what? Inflation. Inflation. So to decide these things, you need to understand some things, man. So 7.2 continued, you know, I was taught to always express what I'm doing because I mean, I'm on a new page, someone may be wondering, what am I doing? So 7.2.2, .2. 2. 
So of course I know that my P is the 500,000 okay and then they told me that my I is just this 0, 0, 0,063 that's what it is per year of course just take that 6,3 and divide by a hundred let me do it and be sure sometimes I make mistakes but I found ways of doing things, you know, the fastest way. So N is 5. And uh, A is the question mark. So how much will this be? So using compound interest. So we know that A equals P into 1 plus I to that exponent over there. So this is 500,000 into 1 plus 0, comma. 0, 6, 3. So this is divided by 1 because per year and then for 5 years. What is that? What is that? So this is 500,000 into 1 plus 0, 0, 6, 3. That raised to exponent 5. So what I get is this nice number here. So we can round off here if we want. So this is going to be 678,635 rands. Now, whenever possible, two decimal places. So I'm going to put and 11 cents. I mean, we can't take more than that. What kind of money is that? All right, um, that is the story. So that is the price that they wanted. In five years, it's gonna be like that. So it makes sense. I mean, it was initially 500,000, so it has been up by um, 178,635 rands, 11 cents. So you can see the difference there. So it's not too bad, but yeah. It's, 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 it's a bit higher than it was. So two marks. Ah, doch. Maybe correct substitution and the answer. That is what matters. So 7.2.3. So this financial section was a bit nice, but maybe a few showstoppers there. Because, I mean, I think some of these words, sometimes we overlook and we get killed. So now it says... The company set up a sinking fund. So what is this sinking fund? What oh, you know that sinking funds are funds that are created to make up for whatever losses you're going to sustain in the future so that you can get what you want without struggling. So it's like putting money for future. Okay. So it's a future value calculation. That's the essence of that. Okay, so so once you hear this, you know that you're going to use the future value calculation, all right? So the company set up a sinking fund and made the first payment. Now, it's very important to know when was the first payment made. So, and made the first payment into this account on the day the old machinery was bought. So that means when this was taken, they already set up this. So this is critical, okay? This is critical. So that means T0 for this one, because on that day, you didn't wait. So that's T0 already. They made the first payment. Now, the last payment was made three months. So again, these statements are very critical. The last payment was made three months before the new machinery was purchased. Now, three months before. So there was a bit of a time where this money was no longer being paid. But accumulating interest. Remember, anything, you don't ignore anything. So this was purchased when? At the end of the five years. Okay, great. Not a problem. So here you need to be that naughty individual who is so. Yeah, it says now the interest and 
on the sinking fund was 10.25 wow i wish i could have this percentage on my savings accounts man i'll be rich you know <laughs> because the interest they're giving is crazy man it's like you're not gaining anything but over time when the principal is huge and you're compounding man you're gonna be rich so don't look for an overnight uh, wealth here you want to work at it save that million you see if you start working you are 25 I mean, come on, man. Let that 10 year period from 25 to 35 be the time where you save. Don't be spending and running around like a crazy person, you know? See young people wasting all their hard earned money over unnecessary things. I mean, it doesn't matter when you're young what you wear, what you eat, where you live. Look, simple things will make your life better. But you see, once you get to the Real age is where life begins, say around 35. You know, when you're 35, you know, you should already be having your own home. Or at least soon to have your own home. If you're a man, you, you know, you want a wife, you want to start a family. Because you've seen it all, you've struggled through, and you've seen the expenses of living and how things are going, so... Sometimes you know you're ready now to start a family. Otherwise, if you start a family instantly, you start working, I can promise you, you're more likely to run the risk of many problems because you are still learning how to live and you already have someone added to that and you have your family that's going to be taking a hike on you a little bit. You have not learned how to resist them, but in a very nice way without being silly and negative because they're still your family. You need them, so... But you need to control how they cling on to you, the weight they put on you financially. Then, I mean, you need to learn the losses as well. You're going to buy some expensive cars and run into some problems with debt, and then you run into some bad debt. Imagine you have a wife and you're in debt and she has expectations. You just go into depression, folks. See, rushing things is a recipe for disaster. That's all I can tell you. So wait. But in that wait, put money away like a madman and put it and tie it so that you cannot access it whenever you want because if you don't tie it, then it's not going to work. Put that money away but tie it and discipline yourself as well. Don't go and untie it. You will see, by the time you're 35, it's 10 years, man. Look, if you're putting a good amount, like 10% of your salary, into your savings and you keep to yourself. Don't be making babies all around you. You're gonna struggle. Just keep to yourself. Whatever you do, you date, make sure protection is used whenever you do the Dark City game. And <laughs> you're gonna be fine. All right, I'm taking forever, guys. I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna make it to the last two questions, uh, man. Maybe we'll cut it here at question 8 and do the last one. So I've already wasted time. I don't want these videos to be too long and tiring. Okay, so, hey, what were we talking about before I start talking nonsense here? It's not about relationship advice or life advice here. This is mathematics. Ish, but, man, these kinds of questions, they just bring me to the reality of life. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Anyway, let's do it. <clears throat> um, uh, okay, this was earning interest. So this is compounded monthly. Again, you see, there's a lot of information in this statement. So please, guys, read this like a crazy man, like you're looking for something. There's always something hidden here. So the money from the sinking fund and the 180000 from the sale of the old machinery. Remember, you're going to sell this at 180000 plus whatever you got from the sinking fund. You're going to buy the new machinery. And it says now calculate the monthly payment into the sinking fund. So how much money did you put in there? So look, this is hard, okay? This is one of those hard questions in financial mathematics. I can already say this is not going to be easy because you need to understand what you are doing. And for you to understand what you're doing, it's going to take, you know, a toll on you. That I can promise you. It takes a toll on you. It's, you're going to feel like you're burning. But 
the best way to do this is to first think about it. This is compounded monthly, okay? Whatever we're doing is compounded monthly. So the first thing you want to do is how many payments must you put into this? Of course, we know this is going to end three months uh, before the end, but let's just go for the whole five years. It's going to be 12 times uh, five, okay, which is 16, eh? which is typical when you buy a car on loan, whatever, you're going to be paying for over five years or up to seven years sometimes. Yeah, but usually five years is better. Uh, okay, so now we're going to have 60 terms. So here's what you do. You know you're going to have just do the so-called timelines. I find this technique the best of all techniques you can think of. So here we have T0, T1, T2, dash, 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 dash. There's a lot of terms you want to consider here. So let's do this one here. So this is T60, but we're going to end three months before that. It's 60. This is 59, this is 58, and that is 57. So I just want to show the last four. So this is T57, this is T58, this is T59. Now this is T60. Okay, this is term number 60 of our compounding period, okay? So this is very important. So we know that at T0, we already made uh, we already made our thingy. We already made our payment, which is going to be X. Let's just choose X for now. And then we're going to pay this until <clears throat> three months before. This is one, two, three. So we're going to stop paying at term number 57. That is the time where we stop paying. Okay, great. So because this is going to be one month, the second, the third. So we stopped three months before the very end of our five year period. Okay. But now, in this whole five year period, what do we have? We want to know what our sinking fund is because it's going to accumulate interest for that whole period because remember we're only going to buy our equipment at the end of that five year period. So they are saying here the interest is um, 10,25% per annum monthly. So, <coughs> so this is how you do this one, okay? gonna say okay that is what I am going to have but remember this sinking fund is built on what remember this is the target and what are we going to have is 180,000 so this sinking fund in essence should make up <coughs> sorry this sinking fund of ours um, yeah there's a lot of things this thing is complicated I promise you it's not easy man it's not easy so it's fine so first of all what do we know the target let's say our a here because we have our a or the fund itself what do we want let's not say a but uh, I don't know man what are we going to say here okay let's just say this fund whatever it is what we are working towards here is what? Is going to be this price here of what we want to use to buy our new machinery because we're gonna buy it at this amount. So this is six seven eight six three five comma one one minus remember we were only going to sell our old equipment. 480,000 so we want to know this is the money we want to raise so that when we combine with our 180 we can have that amount so this is six seven eight six three five comma one one minus 180 thousand 
So what we want to raise basically is this amount here. It's 498,635 rands 11 cents. So this is what we want to target from our sinking fund, okay? So this fund here for these five years must give us this amount of money because when we sell our old equipment, we get this money. And this together will help us to get the money to buy our new equipment. Okay, great. But we have a bit of a situation here. If you look here, we will pay and pay and pay. Of course, we're earning interest as we pay, but this period from here to there, we have stopped paying. So that means whatever full amount we have here, this amount of money from here to there, it will accumulate interest for three months before we get to this amount of money. Okay? So don't forget, you always have to account for everything. So these questions are trick questions. So they will hurt you if you jump into them without noticing. So now let's set up our story nice and easy. So we know for a fact here that from here to there, what will be our N? Our N is simply how many months? So it's always this one minus that one plus one. So it's going to be 57 minus zero plus one, which is 58. So we will have made 58 payments by term number 57. So this is a bit silly because if we started a month later, then it would be exactly where we want it to be. It would be 57. But because we started a month earlier, so at 57, we already made 58 payments. So I'm only using this part and then this last one is going to be three months, isn't it? Yes, it's going to be three months. So we're going to first consider this part. Now let's see what we're going to do. We're going to use our future value formula. We know that our F, this is this fund, by the way, that we want to raise because our sinking fund is worth this amount. Future value there is going to be X into... By the way, I forget this formula all the time. So let me see, where is my information sheet? Because this one always hurts me. And I'm like, I don't like to be hurt anymore. See the future value one? This is present value. So the future value is this one. Okay. So it's X into uh, 1 plus i to exponent n minus 1. Close the big brackets over the interest rate. Okay. So that's what we're going to have. But, like I said, um, if you remember from what we, we said is that this thing is going to draw interest for further three months. So this means we're just going to take simple compound interest, not simple, but simply <laughs> compound interest. So we're going to multiply this by, uh, we're going to multiply this by, remember this whole amount that we're going to get for these 58 months. For a further three months, it's going to be accumulating interest. So this would come the principal, and then we multiply by this interest here. The same interest, we're not going to change it. Uh, I didn't show the interest. By the way, the interest here is compounded monthly, so it's going to be 10,25 divided by 100 first, and then I get this one. And it's going to be 0, 0,1025. But it's compounded monthly, so this is going to be like that. All right, so now this one, for how long are we going to do this? For three months. This is the last three months. Okay, that's why I'm writing differently, so that you don't make that mistake. Okay. Uh, okay, so maybe I should not have written it out like that. I should have written it as a, a standard formula because... 
I think this is a bit silly to start substituting stat. Okay, so this is now zero. What is the interest here? This is now zero comma zero a eh, comma one zero two five over twelve. That's what it is. Okay. So there's a lot of things to consider here. Okay, so now what do we know? We can substitute. So we know here our fund is worth four nine eight six three five comma eleven. Okay, that is rents is equal to our x which is unknown into one plus the interest here is this one right zero comma one zero two five over twelve because it's monthly and oh doch why did I not put the bracket here the small bracket for after that so this is raised how many times we said by the time we get to this one we are ex essentially 58 payments up so this is 58 okay minus one we close this one all over the interest so the interest here alone is just that so it's 0 comma 1025 over 12 so it's not the nominal interest here that you would have here but we are saying all of this is multiplied by that story there maybe this was the time I was supposed to show this one so this is 1 plus 0 comma 1025 over 12 this would be cubed okay because those are the three months in which this thing occurs now this is a very complicated thing here but if you notice what you need to do here this is all over one because I'm dealing with fractions here essentially and this also as a whole is a numerator so that on its own it's over one okay great now all I do here, I simply cross multiply this there, okay? This interest will multiply there. These two will multiply together. But I'll divide by them to get the value of x, okay? So this implies that my x is going to be equal to this one, 4986356. Into 0, 0,1025 over 12 divide by this situation. This one will multiply that because these are both numerators in that situation. So it's going to be this one 1 plus 0, 0,1025 1, over 12 by 58 minus 1 and this one is multiplied to this one oops I like this zero man come on don't do that to me I'm not interested you know and then all of that of course is multiplied together but I'm gonna keep it at that and let's see if we're going to get a realistic value but if we don't, then there is a mistake. Sometimes ugh, this thing is annoying, I promise you. So I'm going to try to write this. So this is 4, 9, 8, 6, 3, 5, uh, comma 1, 1 into that interest over there. So I'm going to write it as it is 0, 0,1025. Over 12. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. So we leave that alone. And then I open a big bracket here. And then another one. So I'm going to have about three brackets here, basically. Yeah. Hey, this is a horrible one. 
1 plus 0, 0,1025 over 12. Then we close that one and say 58 minus 1. Close that one, okay? And then we put another one, 1 plus, yo, 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 0, oops, wait a minute. Wait a minute, 0, 1, 0, 2, 5, yo. I think I'm not happy here because I don't think I'm maintaining my, my concentration, but yeah, I think I'm going fine. I think I'm going fine, man. I think I'm going fine here. So let's see what is the story here. Uh, let's see if everything is where I want it to be. Hey, I made a mistake here. The last one is raised to the exponent 3. See, I forgot to capture that. See, sometimes a silly mistake will cost you, eh? So, um, let's see what we get. So, I think it's a realistic value. Okay? I checked though that everything was fine except the last one where I made a mistake. So, I'm getting 6,510. Now, to two decimal places is going to be three six cents okay not a problem not a problem so it looks a bit closer so i think i will accept this one it's not a big number so it sounds realistic so let's see if we were to say we're making uh, these 60 payments of this amount so we can just say six five one zero comma three six times 60 is what is 390,621 and then of course just to get to a 400 is just over a hundred thousand so I think that is the interest we would have gotten over this time because that is exactly the amount of interest that it was just over a hundred thousand that we got over five years for compound interest day so it makes a bit of sense so I think that is the answer I'm not going to complicate my life further But what you can do here, you can just simply substitute this value, this value over there. And then do this whole calculation and see if you're going to get a number closer to that. Just to make sure you didn't make a mistake. And maybe it should be fine. So this is 5 marks. Yeah, that was not an easy 5 marks. A lot of things had to be put into consideration here. So, yeah, man. So I think this formula was fine together with that. Here, there's a lot of things that you, you need to be marked for, but let's just say correct substitution over there. And for this answer, so there's three marks. I think for this term is important. So one, two, three, four. Um, And maybe for this one, five. Maybe those five marks. I don't know, man. Sometimes this is not easy. So that is the 15 marks. I think the last question really can throw somebody off if you're not careful when you do it. It needs a lot more understanding of what financial mathematics is all about. Like I said, I didn't really feel like this is my strongest, so please check the answer once those memos come out, okay? Because I also don't have something to go and have a look in case I make mistakes, okay? So, have a look at that and let's see. But I feel more strongly that I try to account for everything. You see, a timeline makes life easy for you because if you don't know how to do this right, trust me, the whole calculation becomes a painful exercise because you don't know where you are and where you're going and what you are doing exactly. All right, not a problem. So let's just do the last one. 
I don't want this video to be too long. I started talking a lot of nonsense which I was not supposed to. But let's do differential calculus quickly and then we cut this one. We'll do this one in three stages. I unfortunately cannot do any further than that. So, you know here, this is the easiest question eight. It's first principles and you just use the rules of differentiation here. Okay, so not a big deal. So let's do this one. I hope I didn't take too long. I really hope so. I would be hurt if I take longer than an hour here, but I think I messed up. So here I have f of x is given by minus x squared. So you know that the first principle is going to be minus 2x, right? So we know that f prime from first principle is going to be f of x plus h minus f of x. You need to know this one by heart over h, okay? That is, say, Isaac Newton's quotient. Hmm. Now, I like to work with this directly. So I know that f of x plus h, I'm just going to put it there. So here I'm going to have minus x plus h squared minus here into minus x squared. So be very careful of the signs. They will always hurt you. Oh, Lord, there's something missing here. There is something missing. Liam, as h tends to zero. Yeah, ne? Liam, as h tends to zero. Don't forget that one. It's going to hurt you if you do. It's not correct to not write it correctly. So this equals Liam, as h tends to zero. Unfortunately, this one will always be the annoying part of this question because it has to recurring. So we have minus in to expand this it's going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus into well this one is just going to be plus x squared over h is equals limit where h tends to 0 of now let's work this out. It's going to be minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared plus x squared over h. This equals lim as h tends to 0 off. Now what do you see here? This guy and that already cancel. Minus x squared plus x squared are out. So here we can see that h is the common factor. So we're going to have minus 2x over there, minus 1. All right, and then here we have nothing. Yeah, we have h over there. So the h is cancel. This now, oops, this is equal to. Now we can drop the limit. It's going to be here. Amen. Uh, oh no, this is not 1. This is h. This is h because when you take h, yeah, like that. So we know now this. Ah, we can drop the limit now once we get to that one. It's going to be minus 2x minus. 0. We put that one, which is minus 2x. Again, we knew what was going to be the answer anyway, but they wanted us to show how we use our derivative. Okay, easy. So I think here, correct substitution is cool. And then that expansion is important. And finally, getting to some sort of a situation here is important. And then this substitution and the answer, one, two, three, four, five. So they were giving what? Yeah, five marks. I don't think there's more. I don't think there's more. So let's finish this thing. I think I'm already over two hours now. And that was not the plan, 8.2. So. We know here that we are given f of x equals, okay, I forgot to show you guys. 
being selfish now. So they're saying find the first derivative if f of x is like this 4x cubed minus 5x squared. So I know here ah, the first derivative, I'm just going to use that format, right? Now I'm going to use the rules of differentiation, the power rules. So we're going to go there. 4 times 3 is 12 x3 minus 1 squared okay minus 2 times 5 is 10 and then x so that is that so you get a mark for these two because you got them right so that was uh, essentially 8.2.1 so here you know you're just going to stick to the rules of differentiation and not cause yourself any problems. So here they're telling us here we need to do the derivative of this one minus six times this cube root of x plus two all of this over x to the exponent four. So this one is a bit of work. So you can already tell here, you can't do differentiation if you have sets there. You need to convert that into something else, all right? So um, what we need to do here, this implies that we have here the differentiation of this situation here. What is that? This is minus six x. Now, when it's a cube root, it's going to be 1 over 3. You need to know how to convert those sets into exponents, okay? Uh, let's just already do the right thing here and say this is all divided by x to the exponent 4 plus uh, 2 divided by x to the exponent 4. So we just want to make our lives easy. Again, you cannot differentiate with x in the denominator like that. So we know we were looking for this thing. So we're going to further simplify. So it's going to be minus 6x. Now this one is going to be 8 third minus 4, right? So 8 third minus 4. Remember when you're dividing powers with the same base, you simply subtract the exponents. That is the rules of exponents. So let's see what is 1 over 3 minus 4 is equal to this is minus 11 over 3 okay that's what it is and then we're going to have here plus here it's basically going to be 2 to 2 x to the exponent minus 4 now we are ready to differentiate this is going to be equal to I'm not going to do that dx thing now so what you do there, you multiply this one in front, okay? When we multiply this one in front, we get 3 going to 6 twice, and then twice times 11 is 22. So we're going to get here 22, because minus times minus is plus. So we're going to get 22x. Now, we're going to say 11 minus 1 now this time minus 11 minus 1 so we get here minus 14 over 3 okay uh, minus because that one is going to multiply in front it becomes minus then 4 times 2 is 8 minus 8 x 4 minus minus 4 minus 1 is going to be to the minus 5 I mean I think it don't want to complicate your life and take this a step further. You just leave it here. Don't do anything silly. But I'll give you options. You can leave it as this one. So you can change this into something else. So you can say, for example, what you're going to have here, it's 22 times the cube root because where 3 is, it's the cube root, right? Of x to the minus 14. Uh, uh, minus 8 
over x to the exponent 5. So I mean you can choose to go this route and put those sets back if you want but I don't think it's really nice. You don't need to do that and then for, you can further simplify that by putting as a positive exponent. But I think leave it here. Don't complicate your life. They were giving you four marks for this one so let's see where are these marks. I think for this conversion that is the first thing that you did um, and also to split these like that sometimes it's where you get your second mark for that split and then for converting okay let's not give too much so whatever you did here it's all right um, let's just give you two marks here for this one and that one so this is where probably these four marks come from and you walk away with those 11 marks this is the easiest question you know you see when you're doing like the theory of differential calculus it's like oh, the easiest all right guys thank you for your patience and for watching this video uh, I hope I kept a lot of my gibberish to a minimum and if you spot any mistakes please don't shy away from writing in the comments there to direct me as to what I should have done to get it right and also suggest whatever is your reference for correcting me I'm, I'm not saying prove it but all I'm saying is if you feel like you want to share something don't shy away in the comment section do it otherwise thank you for your patience and I hope you've learned something through this memorandum so we're going to do the last run which is question 9 and 10 together so that we can seal this question 1 story uh, in future I'll be able to try and create uh, some playlist or be able to integrate these videos into one single video so that you can have a look at it at a go so you can just pick those sections that you want and watch them so I'm still learning how to use electronics so I'm probably not so good at this point in time but I hope to improve as time goes I hope you guys enjoyed the video and please if you find this worth uh, your thumbs up please give it and uh, of course I can see that we are growing slowly but surely so subscribers are coming in so we're simply growing so i'm thinking in the near future i'm saying near future i might just do some competitions for you guys i mean i feel like you guys are motivating me when you subscribe i get motivated to do a whole lot more so that you guys can learn and please learn from any other platform not necessarily just this channel okay yeah, I'll probably make some good competitions maybe hmm, maybe towards the end of the year of course I'm going to keep it fair because others have written already so I'll try to keep it fair for them as well so they can still participate but of course the competition will only be for subscribers no one else I'm sorry guys so yeah I can't give those who are not the family it would be unfair to the family all right so please be on the lookout i might make some competitions for you guys very soon you're going to win some very good prizes maybe a laptop maybe a tablet or something but i'll make it something that will add to your education i won't give you something that detours you what what Detours. No, I won't give you something that is going to distract you with your education, but you can choose to distract yourself with it. But I'll make sure though it, you know, enhances your education because if you can have a nice tablet, you can go to Vasita with that. It can help you a lot. Downloading your notes and making your presentations and whatever you need. If you're going to work, again, it's going to keep you, you know, busy. All right, guys, bye-bye uh, for now before I talk too much. And uh, let's see each other on the next video, which is the last portion of this paper. We're going to look at question, I mean, at paper two as well, because I managed to also secure a copy of it. Still looking for the physics paper so that I can share them as well. 
but if you have them please send them to me on my email address you will find it on the channels contact or contacts and uh, I'd appreciate that so that I can have a look at it and start working on it and then share what I find of it all right guys bye for now thank you for your patience and thank you for you're sharing this video in advance and thank you for your like in advance and thank you for your subscription if you will all right bye bye